guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I thought I would give you a little mini tour of my Lamas or Lunasad altar this year. Just as I did with my Beltane altar a few months ago, for this Sabbat particularly, I feel like I've put in quite a lot of work and it's just something that I think might inspire you guys and something that I want to show you guys. So I've had to blow out some of these candles just so that I can really get in there and show you what's actually going on without burning my hands. Um, but this one's still on. Even on my microphone, that's just there to um, record my voice, obviously. <laughs> so um, I'm going to talk through what some of the things are on this altar and how you can make your own version of it for Lamas, potentially. So let's start from right to left, I guess. This right here is a card of the Norse god Frey. I think this is a sort of fairy adaptation of him in one of my tarot decks. So it says abundance, peace and contentment, very much in line with that sort of Leo energy and the Lamas energy that's going on right now. And he is a harvest god. So I thought that was very appropriate, especially to have on the god side, as you can see, the right side is the god side and the left side tends to be my goddessy kind of side. So there's that card. This is a nine of wands card from one of my tarot decks. Again, it's really beautiful, kind of like a phoenix with these fiery colours. And yeah, I really thought that was appropriate for the fiery festival of Lamas and the zodiac sign of Leo. This is that same deck's interpretation of the sun card. It's really cute, there's like two little pixies there. And also on this side we have these roots that I picked up on a walk that for some reason just kind of reminded me a bit of the horned god, kind of twisty and wild, <laughs> etc. So those are there on his side. Here is some incense by Starchild and it's their shaman incense. Yeah, you can read that now. And that for me is quite a masculine energy, so that's here also. We also have the rune Thurazaz here, and I think this was here um, also during my Beltane altar, um, just because this is a symbol of male fertility. So again, it goes quite well with um, Frey and just the Horned God in general. Here we have some oak leaves that I collected on a walk many months ago. Um, they're still here, a little bit dried up, but that's okay because now they just last longer. This is a very beloved Horned God statue of mine that I got in Glastonbury. I just think it's so beautiful and for the duration of the year so far, since about Ostara roughly, I had a different version of the Horned God there who was quite um, bronzed and shiny, but I've changed it to this more rustic version just because I think that fits quite well with the harvesty, earthy vibe going on right now and just because I wanted to change. We have this, um, this is actually the lid of a very magical apothecary jar that I made with um, lions on it and stuff and that's actually currently for sale on my Etsy shop but because no one's buying it I thought I might as well use it myself because it makes a really good decoration for um, the zodiac sign of Leo, I think, just getting those beautiful fiery lion energies in there. I've got some red jasper, as for me that also goes quite well with the vibe. Um, yellow jasper on the other side. There is some orange calcite around the back here. Um, I think this is an aura quartz crystal here, which I kind of have here all year round just because it's so beautiful. I'm just going to pick it up so I can show you. Yeah, so this one is really beautiful and one of my favourites, definitely. You can see all the different lights shining in it, but I digress. <laughs> That's not really relating to Lama specifically, but it's there anyways. Here we have an open notebook of my journal. Um, I think it's called Spiral Through the Year with the Goddess that I've had for quite a while. And it has these beautiful page spreads that I really like spreading out on my altar as it kind of forms the triangle shape that this shelf has. Very convenient and you can just see it says Lamas, Abundance, Gratitude and Compassion. I just have that as the back there as a nice little reflection point and kind of a centrepiece for everything and the reason for everything that is on my altar. This is a beautiful verse that was included in an order that I got from a witchy Etsy shop. It's really beautiful and just golden coloured, matches very well so that's there. So now I want to get into this corn dolly or grain mother that I made. 
um, I might just move back a little bit. So here it is, you've got the different bows of the different colours. Um, and basically just using these ribbons, I tied it all together into this shape. So these are meant to be the two arms, <laughs> that's supposed to be the head. It's very basic, I know, but corn dollies usually are. Um, it's just a nice little representation of the goddess, but made up of wheat or grains, um, dried grasses, and all of those things that are very abundant at this time of year. And just giving thanks for that, giving thanks for the seeds here that will contain new life in the spring. And yeah, it just makes a nice little cross here on my altar. And I think in my Lamas video I did say about how this is quite a Christianized festival as well. Um, you've got the the god archetype in paganism sacrificing himself in the first cut of the corn, and that is similar to Christ's sacrifice on the cross. Because this makes the cross, it's just kind of nice. I don't really have any um, rules kind of in my practice forbidding me from having Christian kind of influences um, because I grew up Christian, but it might not be to everyone's taste, but I think it's quite cool how that links there. Moving on, we have these yellow candles, which are just obviously kind of large tea lights, and I've just put some chamomile flowers in there to melt into the wax. They'll smell really nice, hopefully, and chamomile is a good herb associated with Leo, if you watch my Leo video. I talked about that a bit, and just generally has those beautiful golden vibes of the season, and I have that in these white candles as well. I think if it was up to me, these would have all been yellow or orange candles, but I only had three yellow candles, so we make do with what we have. <laughs> so this is my mother goddess statue. Now, for the longest time, <laughs> a few months actually, um, since Astara, I've had my Aphrodite um, statue here as representing the goddess in her maiden form, but I have switched her out and replaced her with my other goddess statue of the Great Mother. As you might have noticed in my last few videos, I've kind of been rambling on about the mother goddess archetype that is so prevalent at the moment, both with the full moon, with Lamas. So here she is, looking very pretty. We have some other cards behind her. This is the Queen of Pentacles, so she's very beautiful, got that red fiery image about her. She's holding an apple, a blooming fruit of this season and I really think could be linked to Lamas. Pentacles is linked to Earth, and Lamas is about um, the suit of wands, which is more fiery, but I still think this goes really well, given that the harvest is all about the gifts of the Earth. So, Queen of Pentacles there. I hope she doesn't fall down. Um, this is the Rider Waite traditional sun card. This is the Empress card from the same deck as the Queen of Pentacles one. She looks really beautiful and radiant. She's holding some grains of wheat or barley there in her hand, and some apples there. So again, showing the fertility, the harvest of the earth, I think is really great for this time. And this is from the Fairy Forest Oracle deck, representation of Frigga, another Norse goddess. I think it's quite nice to have her mirroring the Norse god Frey over here. And again, she looks very fiery, very warm and abundant, and it just says, readiness, bounty, plenty. So this sums up the harvest season all in one. I'll probably have her here on my altar for a while because of that. This is Gaia Star Child Incense. There you go. Obviously on the goddess side, Mother Goddess Gaia. Um, I did have Avalon here to be more with the fairies, but um, fairy time was more summer solstice and Beltane time, and now I feel like we're really moving into the fullness of the mother here, so that's why we have the Gaia Incense here. Over here we have the Bocando Rune. This is representative very much of the mother goddess with the um, breasts and belly kind of shape. And it is the bee sound in the alphabet as well, as it looks quite a lot like a bee. So that is very feminine, and that goes right over there with my mother goddess. If we move forward now, we can see that there is a little bit of pyrite over here, just some nice sparkly gold, radiant, abundant energies over here to match with Leo, Lamas, the full moon, everything like that. This is the rune Gebo, or the gift. This represents the gift of life and the gifts that are very readily available right now for us with the harvest. Here we have some citrine. There we go, citrine. And a little tab of orange calcite that I think is really cute. And my favorite part of the altar is the wands. As I said about in my Lamas video, Lamas is a time very much associated with wands, linked with the suit of fire and therefore associated with the fire sign Leo that the sun is in currently as well. 
So this is my wand that I've had for many years. It happens to have these beautiful fiery colours on it as well. This is actually tree sap that I picked and stuck onto this piece of wood, as I said many years ago, and it's really lasted very well, I think, given all the years that it's been out in the sun and <laughs> in all kinds of weather. So I'm very happy with that and it has a lot of power behind it. And of course, I can't just have my wand without having my partner's new one. Um, he's never really used it because he's not, well, he doesn't really identify as a pagan, but he thought it would be fun to make his own wand, so that's his. Um, and it also happens to have some quite fiery colours to it. His element as a person, he's closely related with fire, so there are some fiery colours here. And at the end, there's some dark tumuline there as well. So, zooming out so you can see the whole thing. That is pretty much it for this main section of the altar. If you look above here though, there is some drying mint leaves. So I have some spearmint growing in my garden. And whilst I was doing my research for the Lamas video, I found out that mint is very heavily associated with that Sabbat. And it signifies abundance and bounty and plenty and all of this stuff like that. Plus it just smells really amazing. And I've wanted to have some drying for a while. So there it is, again, tied with the ribbons of the colors of the season. If you want to make your own Lamas altar, just go with what you have available to you. Go with what is available in the natural world, what resonates with you, and what makes you think of the season that we're currently in. So as you can see, this wasn't done with wheat that I didn't have access to. I just used it with cuttings from my grass that were already a lovely golden color. And that is perfectly valid just to do things like that, make it your own. It doesn't have to be perfect, just as long as it looks pretty or you think it's pretty and it resonates with you and helps you to connect with the earth at this time, with the god and the goddess, if you believe in them. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you have had a beautiful Lamas or Lunasad time. And let me know in the comments how you celebrated and what you have on your altar, because I'd love to know. So thank you so much for watching guys and blessed be once again.